Hi there! Today I want to talk about treating your renderings as if they are photographs in a software like Capture One or Camera Raw, Lightroom or whatever you like to use so that you can get a more photorealistic look. This video got quite long so let's look at what you're up to when watching. First I'm going to talk about the difference between linear space and the photographic look. Then I'm going to show you how I process my actual photos that I take with my photo camera. Then I'll show you how I processed a commissioned work a few years ago. And I have also a little bonus for you, which is a LUT pack that I'm distributing for free on my stores. So you can easily get a nice contrast in your renderings. We're going to take a look at another sample that I did for a furniture maker. And then we have the wrap up and my philosophical view on contrast and photos. Because every or most rendering engines work in linear space. Linear space is not the way we see the world, and especially it's not the way we see the world through photos. Let's take a look at this piece here, which I did for a client a few years ago. I worked in uh, 3ds Max and rendered it in um, V-Ray. And when we look at the original rendering, which is this one, this is actually the EXR I saved, the 32-bit EXR, without any V-Ray frame buffer uh, corrections. And this is the way I set up the rendering so I can get the room very bright and light and this airy feeling. Obviously, if you would do a rendering and leave it as it is in linear space, then you probably wouldn't render it like this. You probably would tone it down and have it not as bright as it is right now. So you can see here on the right side in these spots where the light is hitting the objects. And you can see how the materials react to the light, in my opinion, in a very ugly way. Like this floor has a brown wooden texture and it gets somehow yellowish, orange-ish um, in the place where, where the light hits it. it. It's not very pleasing to the eye. It's just too bright anyway. And this, this wall is totally burned out. This is burned out from the light coming from the left. And it lacks, it lacks contrast. So the way we see the world through photographs is actually through the contrast and the colors that the, that the camera already puts into the photographs or um, the smartphone puts already into the photographs. So they are pleasing to us. It's a, it's a nice contrast in there already. It's not linear, it's most probably some kind of S-curve in there. So if you treat your ArcWiz um, renderings as photographs, you can get a lot of pleasing and more realistic contrast and more realistic colors in your renderings. So let's take a little detour here and I will talk about how I treat my photos in Capture One and you can see how the process of doing that is related when I am post-processing my ArcVis and in general my CGI renderings. And after this detour we're going to go back to the actual topic of post-processing and treating your renderings. So I'm talking about my perspective here but um, in 2017 I was featured at the uh, Epson Gallery in, in Tokyo with a small exhibition and the uh, exhibition was called Nosotros de Cuba. I went with Kataoka Hidenori and uh, Ota Koji to Cuba for two weeks and we just spent the whole time taking photos and I'm going to explore a little bit how I'm post-processing my photos in Capture One. So for example, um, the output that we get from a rendering software is vastly different from what we get from a camera. But how we process them and how we have to prepare the renderings so we can process them in, um, in a similar way is the important thing. So for example this photo here. This is the outcome and in my case I really like to make the photo pop to make it contrasty, to make the edges hard, to have a lot of detail. Now, in your case, it might be different and that's fine, but I'm going to talk about how I process these photos and then compare how I process my uh, ArcVis rendering. So I'm working on a raw image of my camera, which in this case is the Sony A uh, Alpha 7R. And this is the original photo. So as you can see, the raw picture is 
very soft and even though it has a lot of detail but it doesn't pop as much. Um, what I did was to raise the shadows and that's to counter how much contrast I put into the photo. And then I used a lot of clarity. This is at 100 and raised the structure. So I raised the intermediate details here. You can see this is kind of soft. This is hard. So we I added a lot of, lot of, lot of contrast. I added a curve to get more contrast in the whole picture. And that's about it. This is another good example. The original photo looks like this. And I love the wall here. And I love the details in the wall. I love the, the dirt on it. I love the chipped color. And you can see that they painted over the color again and again. The dirt, the imperfections, they are really great. And I want to make them pop. So again, I'll raise clarity to 100% which already brings out local contrast. So like the dark parts here get darker and the smaller bright parts get brighter. And I added another curve to it to get more contrast. Oh, and I, I, um, I, I brought the highlights down. I brought the shadows up. This is the counter all the contrast that I brought into the picture. So if you compare it from this to this, there's a huge difference. I can do this because I took the photos as raw images. I have lots of dynamic range in this picture. So after this little detour, let's go back to bringing our boring linear renderings to a picture that looks like it was taken by a camera. So this is the 32-bit file saved as a 16-bit TIFF file. And we're going to try the, to bring the highlights down so that we don't have the burnout highlights here anymore and if I bring this down to 100% you can already see that it's getting gray. So actually the 16-bit TIFF file is not the same as a 12-bit RAW file. The RAW file has much more dynamic range. So we bring it closer to an S-Log or V-Log file which is very very low contrast and you have all the dynamic range and you squeeze it into the 8-bit file because in, in Capture One and in Photoshop and in Camera Raw and in Lightroom you cannot work with 32-bit pictures. So the most important thing here is to use Highlight Burn to get all the information in the burned out areas and then later in your image processing software you put back in the contrast that you want to achieve. So this is the highlight burn. It just takes all the details that are burned out in the highlights. This is the original and as I take out the highlights I make the image more flat. What I also did was to tweak the white balance because I thought the, the image was just too blue. And then in the end, I also used an LUT to put in more contrast. So in this case, I was using Kim Amland's um, photographic LUTs, which just puts a nice contrast in your image. And then I saved it out as a 16-bit TIFF file. Okay, so you load in your TIFF file with your contrast burned in and your highlight burn burned in. And this is already nice. You could stop there because you already have a different contrast and it's not a linear image, image anymore. But as I said, if you treat your renderings as photographs and you see your renderings not as the final image, but the processed image as the final photo, then you will get even more photorealistic look. So, this is the final result. Actually, this is the final result that I sent to the customer. But looking at it right now, I think there could be more contrast. It all depends on what your customer wants. Actually, I love clarity. I will come to this um, right now, but I love the clarity slider, which you also have in Lightroom and you also have it in Camera Raw. So I would probably prefer something like this which has a little bit more contrast. So if we break this down, then you start from this and then I went for, to this. So actually in there, again, 
I took the highlights down, so I produced a more, even flatter image, with the LUT already burned in. Then I upped the saturation, and that's it. And from there the fun part starts, because I just put in more clarity, here you go, 47, put in more structure, which in my opinion already pushed the photo and the details so much more than the original um, linear image. But in this case, I want more clarity. And it's great that in Capture One you can you have different modes of clarity, which is a different kind of algorithm to calculate the clarity. And the first one was punch, and the second one is neutral. So you have you you get different kinds of uh, contrast. If you put if I put this on punch, it's a little bit more um, saturated. I could put this to natural, or I can put it to neutral, which is darker and less saturated, and just gives more kick. No. So, so the next step at that time was to desaturate the shadows because I didn't like how um, in the shadow part it was more saturated, and I wanted to have even more contrast in the shadows. And since this is like a, a catalog image for the sofa. I desaturated the sofa, made it a little bit more brighter, so everyone understands this is a gray sofa, and it's bright and it's nice. And upped the shadows a little bit, because it was a little bit too contrasty. So again, if we go from this linear piece, and don't mind the, the, the small corrections that I did, throughout the rendering. So if we go from this linear piece to this one coming out of the VFB and then this one that I worked on in Capture One, I think there's a big, big difference. You can finish the photo in the VFB too. In the VFB you don't have the micro contrast, you don't have the clarity and I just love that effect. But um, that's just me. If you want to kickstart your photorealistic look when it comes to contrast in your renderings, just go to my stores and download the free photographic LUTs and the V-Ray VFB presets and you can easily get a nice contrast in your pictures. So go ahead and download them and just play around with them and I'm sure that you will be fond of the results. So here is another example. There's another furniture catalog image that I did for a large European furniture maker. This is how the actual linear image looks like, totally burned out. The reason why is that I want to fill this room with light, and especially for catalog images you have, want to have everything very bright and very clear, and you don't want to have too much contrast in here. So as you can see this is totally unusable, but what I actually worked from was this image. So as I said, we can't output a raw image from V-Ray or as far as I know any other rendering engines. So we have to bring this to kind of log contrast. So there's basically no contrast at all and all the information is pressed into one image. So from there, we would go and add all the contrast that we want and we have total control on how the image will look in the end. So how to achieve this? In V-Ray 5, V-Ray 6 for that matter, we would just go and add an exposure layer in the VFB all the way down until there is no burned out area anymore. And this is still burned out a little bit. And this is still burned out. So we use, we use another layer um, of highlight burn and bring it down just as much as we can without getting it too too gray because the gray parts they don't really help us it's just gray there's no more information in there i would say around yeah 0.5 and from there i would go and um, i always start with the clarity because i i love that effect and i add clarity and you can already see the micro contrast really brings out the texture. So we'll just go out in and, and add contrast here with a curve. 
it's nice, but it's not as the same, not the same as bringing the clarity. And I like to mix up the clarity. It's like 50 natural, add another layer, 50 punch, and maybe add another layer and add 50 neutral. And from there, I love to work with layers and then add more contrast with the curve. Don't want any area to be totally white. We don't want this to be too dark. You still want to see something in the shadows. And one of the most important things, because we put in we put in all that contrast, we need to bring the highlights down again. And we know that we already we have that information in here, so um, it's just a matter of how we process it in Capture One and bring the highlights down so it's not too burned out. And then we can add even more brightness. And probably that's about it. I mean, we could use some, some vignetting, like the darker parts outside. It's not so much liked in the furniture industry, so the other way to make it brighter in the, in the corners. So this was pretty quick. Um, let's compare it to the stuff that I that made that I made in the end. I think at that time I raised the shadows to make the picture more appealing and not as contrasty and dark as my current version. And this concludes my video about treating your renderings as photos and I hope you got some inspiration and maybe some new ideas for new workflows. I think from a philosophical point of view it's important how you look at your renderings and don't look at your renderings as something artificial. And if you treat your renderings as photos, you take a different angle on looking at them and processing them, I think in the end you will get a much more realistic look. Okay, thanks for watching today. It was a pleasure talking to you. If you like my channel, if you like my videos, please like and subscribe, comment. I'm very eager to know what you think about my videos. If there's anything that I can help you with to achieve better renderings and higher realism, just ping me and we'll get in touch. Okay, bye bye. Talk to you soon. Cheers.